So now we've read integers from a file and strings from a file. What about if we had a mixture of integers and strings? So this is doable. This is in a different file. So let's go ahead and get set up for what we need to do. Uh, we need an IF stream object, an input file stream object for this file. So I'm going to define an object. And let's see, what should we call this one? Notice how we get to pick our own names, right? So I'm just going to call this one input. And I'm going to use this abbreviated way of saying, imp of defining it at the same time that I open it. So name age.txt. So there I'm defining an, an IF stream object, naming it input, and opening the file. And again, I need to make sure I go up one folder to be able to find it. Now this is an input file stream, so I need to make sure and verify that it makes sure that it was able to open, or I, my reading won't work, and then my program won't go. Now, what do I have to do? It needs to be with this object. There we go. So I need to see if that one failed. And if it does fail, I want to print out a message and return it. Now, it, it actually is kind of helpful if in here you put the name of the file, un unable to open file, name age dot text. And then you know which one is a problem, especially when you have three. So notice that we have three of them at this point, uh, three different IF stream objects, input file stream objects, and three connected to three different files. So for each one, we can go ahead and put the name in the message, and that just makes our message more specific. All right, now that we have both, um, oh, we're going to use the same name and age arrays. So let's go ahead and refill them, right? And all we have to do to refill them is use that fill again. And I'll put ages back to negative 1. So whatever they had in them before will be overwritten, and I'll do the same with name, stop fill, and we'll reset it back to the hyphen. Okay, so now they're reset back to where we wanted them to be, and we'll need a size variable to keep track of what our valid size is now. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to call this one size, and I'm going to set it at zero. We're back at the beginning for both these files. I'm going to use exactly the same size for both arrays. Okay, now we want to be able to read all the values from the name.age file. And so since we want to do all of them, we want to do a while loop. And we don't get to choose. Do we want to read the string first or the age first, right? The name or the age first. We don't actually get a choice. Remember that we need to know what's in the file. We, when we open the file, we're at the beginning. So the first thing we're going to read is the age. So that's what we need to read, and then we need to read the name. So knowing what's in your file is critical. So now we're going to be using input, the stream named input, and we're going to read that into ages size. Okay, and that will be our loop that will end when we get to the end of the file, right? It'll read a value and get the end of the file. Once we get inside there, we want to, the next thing that we're going to do Right, we just read the age, and we read right to there, and now we want to read the name. And we know we need to use getLine to read it, and we're going to get the value from the input stream, and we're going to store it in names, size, and then we're going to increment size. All right, and then we want to print out all the valid elements. So to do, let's get one of these up here. And we're going to print out both. So we're going to print out all the valid elements in the names and ages array. Right? So now instead of just doing that, let's go ahead and put a space. And then print out the ages i. And that will loop through and do all of them. And we can go ahead and do um, all the elements so we see how they ended as well. So now we want to do all elements in the names and ages array. And this one will go through instead of, oh, here we need to loop to size. I almost forgot to reset that. We want to go from zero to size because size is the value we're using now. And if we want all of them, then we're going to use k max size. 
All right, let's see what we get. Oh, okay, so these are still printing from before. And when we get down here, this is, oh, I missed L. Valid elements, all I get is a 22. And here I get a 22 and a zero. So this isn't working. So what is the problem? It is the same problem we get when we're using the extract in C, when we're using CN and we use an extraction operator followed by a get line. Remember when we have that combination, the extraction operator leaves the white space in there, right? So it leaves the white space in the stream and then get line gets that carriage return and it's happy. What's happening here is CN is reading right to here, right? If when we do that, um, I'm sorry, the extraction operator reads right to there and then waits. Then get line reads that carriage return, right? It gets that carriage return right there and it's done. Our next one is trying to read an integer, right? That's when we're trying to get the next age. And it reads this and it just makes a mess of things. It just quits working. It goes through this loop that just doesn't do anything right. And so that's what's happening. So what we need to fix that, and remember, we need to always remember this, and this happens whether we're reading file streams or whether we're reading the standard CN. Whatever input stream you're using, the extraction operator and the get line work differently on that way. And to fix that, we need to do input.ignore. Now, before we used CN.ignore because we were using the CN stream, but we need to ignore on whichever stream we're using. And in this case, we're using the input stream. And so save that, build it, run it, and there we go. There we have the valid elements. It puts the name and the age all the way down. All the elements, it puts the name and age, and it shows us those four elements. And notice we didn't use while in the we didn't use get line in the while, so it didn't actually fill that one with an empty string. So all the they have those default values in them. I'm going to fix that all. There we go. We get that fixed. We run it again, and we're golden. And that's how we read. We can read anything that's in a file, whatever mix it is. We can figure out how to read it. Right there we go. And get what we need and, and get read from those strings. So we can read from a file, a mixture of both integers and strings.